Hello everyone. In summarize the spoken test, which one do you think is the most important part? Writing, listening, or both? Now think about it in two seconds. Okay, so as we all know, summarize spoken test, you get tested for both of your writing and also your listening. But your number one, you need to make sure your writing has to be correct before you get your listening marks. Yes, writing is very, very important. Let me explain to you in a few ways. Number one, what matters to writing? Think about it. Write it down on a piece of paper. What matters to writing? Yes, grammar, vocabularies, your punctuation, and the most important one is your structure. You've got to write a good structured summary before they test your listening contents. And on top of that, you've got to make sure that your spelling is perfect. Why? Let's say this way. You're supposed to write an argument but you write some other words, A-U-G-R-M-E-N-T, what is that? The computer will not understand what did you write. And if you write this for your listening summaries, you have a lot of notes, but you got so many wrong spellings. So again, you will lose your mark for both your writings and your listening. And let's talk about your grammar and your vocabularies. A lot of students come to me and say, you know what, I have to use synonyms. Do I? No. You don't need to use synonyms. I'll give you one example. There are certain audios that they were talking about breakfast, fruits, apple, peach, all of these different type of fruits that you're going to eat in your breakfast. But after this audio, you use a lot of synonyms. What did you do? You said, well, this is about one of the most important meal in the day. One of the most important meals in the day. But however, the speaker mentioned about that you have to consume certain different type of fruits but you never mention about breakfast, neither apple or peach, all of these keywords. In that case, even though you use a lot of synonyms, you were still not getting any of your good mark for your listening. Because why? The computer cannot recognize your keywords. So easy, just copy the speaker, whatever the speaker says, you're gonna write the exact same keywords, exact the same. You don't need to rephrase, you don't need to paraphrase. And grammar, easy, whatever you hear, you're gonna write the same one. Next one is your structure. Quite often, students get confused with summarize the written task and your summarize, everyone's clear. You're gonna write around, around 65 roughly, which is very good. But for the listening summary, it asks you to write a one paragraph summary, not a one sentence. And quite often, you get confused and you're gonna write one sentence again. If the computer see that you're not writing one paragraph, instead you're writing one sentence, then you will get zero immediately. So they are not going to check you anymore. So writing is very important. A good structured summary for listening should be around four or five sentences. So those are some common mistakes that you have been making about your listening. So now next one, we're gonna talk about the most important part. Besides your writing, now you got your writing right, and you have to make sure that after your writing, you're gonna get your marks for your listening, right? Because end of the day, this is a listening test. And quite often that you have beautiful writing, your grammar is right, you got the keywords, you got your punctuation, and it is beautiful, right? You, you write a very beautiful summary with a proper structure, uh, a, a right amount of words. But however, you're getting the wrong information. So listening part and you are actually making some common mistakes. Quite often, I have some students that they are very good with their listening. Their speaking is good, like in general, their English is beautiful. They understand every single words, every single sentence from the speaker. But that is a problem because they understand everything and you tend to write a summary according to your own understanding. So everything gets messed up. You lost the original sequence. You lost the original order of the speaker, right? You have something on your notebook, but you don't write according to the order or the sequence. You write according to your own understanding. So if that's the case, no. The reason why is you are not dealing with a human. You're dealing with a computer. So the computer is checking you by using your answer and the original script. So they're matching with each other. So if you have any sequence or order, it's not, it's not matching with the original script then how can they recognize your keywords? So be very careful about this part. Okay, come to the listening part. It's a summary, think about it. 
anything related to listening, you can have a proper structure, right? The speaker deliver us certain information about a topic. The speaker give us a clear explanation about the topic. The speaker also give us some supporting ideas about the topic. That means new ideas that to support this argument or su support the topic. At the same time, the speaker always give a proper ending. So when you write a summary, think about it. Do you write in the similar logic? A topic, an explanation, explanation about the topic, and did you add anything new, new supporting ideas to support the previous topic? Or did you have your good conclusion? Quite often, you don't have any of this. So what I'm going to do is, we're going to listen to this audio. Mary Mellon, better known as Typhoid Mary, was the first person in the United States identified as an asymptomatic carrier of the pathogen associated with typhoid fever. She was presumed to have infected 51 people, three of whom died over the course of her career as a cook. She was twice forcibly isolated by public health authorities and died after a total of nearly three decades in isolation. From 1900 to 1907, Madden worked as a cook in the New York City area for seven families. In 1900, she worked in Mamaroneck, New York, where, within two weeks of her employment, residents developed typhoid fever. In 1901, she moved to Manhattan, where members of the family for whom she worked developed fevers and diarrhea, and the laundress died. Madden then went to work for a lawyer. She left after seven of the eight people in that household became ill. In 1906, she took a position in Oyster Bay, Long Island, and within two weeks, 10 of the 11 family members were hospitalized with typhoid. She changed jobs again, and similar occurrences happened in three more households. She worked as a cook for the family of a wealthy New York banker, Charles Henry Warren. When the Warrens rented a house in Oyster Bay for the summer of 1906, Mellon went along too. From August 27th to September 3rd, six of the 11 people in the family came down with typhoid fever. The disease at the time was unusual in Oyster Bay, according to three medical doctors who practiced there. According to the notes, so after this audio, I believe you guys had very beautiful notes, similar like mine. But however, because it's an easy audio, you listened everything and you understand every single content. But when you write a summary, you write something that is totally different. You write according to the rough meaning or the broad understanding of you. Right? So in that case, look at this summary. You lost all your, con all your orders and sequence, and you rephrase certain things. W whenever you rephrase, you are losing your keywords and key contents. And that is a big no. Please, you have to avoid this. And how are we going to write a good summary? I'll give you an example. So according to the notes that we have, so I would write a first sentence according to the topic where I have the first four notes. Mary Mellon, first carrier of typhoid fever in the United States. And you will see Mary Mellon, which was the first carrier of typhoid fever in the United States. That's exactly what the speaker says. And after that, I need to explain about this Mary Mellon or typhoid Mary or typhoid fever. And then again, I have another a group of contents then that talks about that she affected 51 people, she died, and she was working as a cook. She got isolated by public authorities. So that's what the speaker said, exactly follow the order. And then afterwards, because I have more contents, same as you, then we just form another a few sentences that we're elaborating about the changes. Well, she worked for different families from New York to Oyster Bay. Some of you might add a Manhattan in the middle because if you know the spelling, if you're not sure about the spelling, I would prefer you don't write this. And then after that, they said, you know, she, wherever she worked in the Oyster Bay, she got isolated. And then afterwards, she changed her position. She worked as a banker. I didn't write exactly as the speaker said, but what I write included all the keywords. And then at the end, we all heard that the, the disease was unusual according to the three medical doctors who practiced it there. That's something the exactly the same according to the audio. So write it. That's a very good, proper conclusion for that. After that, you will see my summary. You can see in my summary, I included some connectors. However, 
and then I didn't write my sentence one after another. I used something to link to each other. That is a very important part when you do the writing. Again, writing is very important because the summary that you write, you need to be coherent. You can't just put a lot of sentences together, right? So you need to make sure that you write them correctly with, with your connectors, linking words. And one of the most important thing is about your grammar. Some of you are really confused. What kind of grammar I'm going to write? If the speaker use past, you use past. If the speaker use present perfect, you use present for perfect. But what I want to emphasize in here is you are going to write not only grammatically correct sentence, but very important this part, grammatically meaningful sentence. I give you an example. I say yellow is a bright color. Do you agree? Subject, verb, object. Grammatically, my sentence is correct. And the meaning is also correct. But, however, I'm going to change this one. I'm going to say, apple is a bright color. Grammatically, I'm correct. Subject, verb, object. But the meaning is wrong. It doesn't make sense. So that's the whole point of when you're writing a writing, when you write a writing summary, your sentence has to have, has to have a correct grammar itself. And at the same time, the meaning has to be correct, right? You don't need to have the exact same meaning of the speaker, but whatever you write has to be meaningful. Got it? So guys, if you like this video, thumb up. If you don't like this video, thumb up, thumb up, thumb up. If you have any questions, leave it below. Subscribe this channel, follow us on Facebook, and follow us on Instagram. You will keep updated about the changes and new updates and new tips and tricks about PT exam. See you soon, bye-bye. Keep yourself safe.